a runny potato curry and chapatis are what this family eats most days. It's not a varied diet and not very nutritious, but it's all they can afford. 22-year-old Uzma lives in this mud house with her husband, her two children and several other relatives. She was eight months pregnant when they had to run for their lives last year, fleeing the flooding that hit their village. The waters left her home in the southern Sindh province inundated for months. Their livestock, a source of food and income, all perished. Even though they are back in their home and are trying to make ends meet, the family hasn't fully recovered. We struggle to get food. My husband can't find work. Sometimes we can only afford to feed the children. We adults go to bed hungry. When we have the money, we buy some potatoes to feed the children. This area was one of the worst affected. The waters destroyed four million acres of agricultural land throughout Pakistan. Large parts still can't be worked. That's left many farming communities without food and a sustainable source of income. Local aid groups have stepped in and are working with women most in need, teaching them to farm. Salma has been trained to grow her own vegetables on a small piece of land. She manages to grow enough to feed her children and also sell extra produce to make some money. I'm glad we survived the floods. We lost a lot of our livestock, 12 goats and 2 cows. We became poor. We couldn't buy enough vegetables to feed the whole family. My children were always getting sick. Now I'm able to feed my children properly. But these local interventions are only a tiny fraction of what is needed. The Pakistani government says it cannot provide large-scale help. It was in one of the worst economic crises in the country's history when the floods hit. They were the worst on record and have been directly linked to climate change. Even though Pakistan emits less than 1% of global greenhouse gases, its people are suffering the direct consequences. That's why the implementation of the Loss and Damage Fund at the UN Climate Conference COP28 offers some hope for these communities. But until the funding is released, millions will have to survive on their own.